Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents. We're God's Church of Love Online. And I believe God wants his people to be encouraged. No matter what you're facing, no matter what you feel like you're running from, no matter what seems to be chasing after you, be encouraged because you have a Father in heaven that rules the universe. The invisible and the tangible is under his almighty control. So fear not, y'all. We are going to James chapter 5, verse 1 to 11. Go to now, you rich men. Weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered. And the rust of them, not the rest, but the rust, you know how metal rusts and corrodes, the rust of them shall be a witness against you and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasures together for the last days. Behold, the hire of the laborer who has reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, crieth. And the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. You have lived in pleasure on the earth and been wanted. You have nourished your hearts as in the day of slaughter. You have condemned and killed the just, and he doth not resist you. Now, this is God's word to his people. Be patient, therefore, brethren unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth and hath long patience for it until he receive the early and latter rain. Verse 8, be ye also patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Take my brethren the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. 11. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job and have seen the end of the Lord that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercies. You know, we think a lot of times, ow, oh, sorry, y'all, because we're going through that something's wrong. We did something wrong. Something's wrong with us. Well, let me erase your doubt. Yeah, something's wrong with every single one of us. Join the club. It's called the human race. Why is it the human race? Because we live in a fallen world. So yeah, something's wrong with you and something's wrong with me. Now that we've gotten that cleared out of the way, let's move on and deal with the problems, the issues, and the solutions. <laughs> we are the problem. The issues are or the things we have to deal with in our flesh on this fallen world. And the solution is God. Now that's the sermon right there, wrapped up and we're done, right? No, we're not. But anyway, so, so what I want to say to you is the bottom line is there is corruption in this world. And the powers that be, as we call it, we're not talking about demonic powers right now. We're not talking about angelic powers right now. We're talking about the powers that run this world, the puppeteers, as they call it, or the puppet masters. I think that's what it is. The puppet masters and the puppeteers are working together to satisfy their, to satisfy their own greed, their own agendas their own plans of mice and men. But God, no matter what we feel we fall prey to, no matter what power we feel we don't have, whatever 
legalistic clout we do not have, whatever financial pull we lack, the bottom line is God is the ruler of the universe. And according to Psalms 24, we have to remind ourselves the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and all that dwell therein, even the rich, even the powers that be, even the demons and the devil and the angels, whatever, all circumstances that seem to work against us, it's all under God's control. And if God allows it, there's a reason. We may not know it. We may not get the memo, but God knows what he's doing. And there are times he allows things. I'm going to share something about my husband, Milton. There are times he allows things because there are things in our flesh that God cannot allow to have too much uh, roaming space, so to speak. I remember Milton and I had a talk one afternoon, and it was one of those difficult days where he was dealing with his blindness. Now, my husband was 100 percent blind. Glaucoma took about 70 percent of his blind of his sight, but laser surgery took the rest. You know, they were trying to stop the hemorrhaging behind uh, behind his optic nerve. And as a result, they stopped his ability to see completely. All right. So here we go. Here Milton's having a difficult time. And I asked him, I said, you kind of grumpy today. You having a bad blind day? He said, yes, I am, baby. And we prayed about it. I prayed for him. The Lord would lift his spirits. And I said, you know, Milton, this is coming to my mind about your past. Sometimes God is more concerned with our soul than he is about the comfort of our flesh. And I'm saying that to all of us because we all have different areas of struggle. We all have different areas of weakness and different areas of discouragement. But know that whatever God does, according to Romans, all things work together for our good to them that love God and who are called according to his purpose. So moving right along, let's get back to Milton. This is the example. I talked to Milton and I felt like I was under the influence of God's anointing. And I said, you know what, baby, think about this. You remember how Jesus said that if your eye offend you, pluck it out. If your hand offend you, cut it off. If this happens, if that happens, chuck it, whatever. Well, the bottom line is God is more concerned, according to Jesus' words. It is better that you go into heaven missing body parts. This is in, in the language of Pat's two cents than to go into hell with every body part intact. Every wit whole is the way Jesus puts it. So do you want to go to heaven missing body parts? Or do you want to go to hell with everything in place? All your money is together. Your looks are there. You got every part of your body working in perfect working order. But you going to hell, baby. So what good is all that going to do you? Now, or would you rather go to heaven and suffer the possibility of missing body function, of having to go through some stuff? Because this life is temporal. It's temporary. It's short-lived. It's a, it's a minute when you look at eternity. It's a split second when you compare it to eternity. But what lies ahead is heaven, baby. And you're going to have a brand new body anyway. What lies ahead is paradise, living in the presence of God, the angels, all the beauty that we don't get to see down here or in this fallen world. So I told Milton, 
I said, knowing that you want to go to heaven and you're trusting God with how you get, how you get there. Right now, what you're missing is the function of your eyes. But do you remember what your eyes did for you when you could see? Do you remember what trouble your eyes got you into when you had your full eyesight, but you were not saved? You could see clear as a bell, but you were not walking with the Lord. What was your biggest weakness? Women, gambling, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh. And of course, the pride of life that comes along with it. So sometimes God has to allow, not make it happen, just allow some things to befall us for the sake of our soul's salvation. Now, yes, you were already walking with the Lord when that happened. But while you were walking with the Lord, women were still your weakness. Am I right? And what did Milton say? Yeah, you're right, baby. And no need in lying about it. I always struggled with that. All right. So maybe this is God's way of protecting you from the lust of the flesh. The caution. Sometimes God puts a yellow light in our life. And it's blinking, blah, 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 blah. And it's saying, slow down, slow down, slow your roll now. And you don't know why. But, you know, you're the bull in the china closet. You want to handle it. You want to go do this. You want to go do that. You can. So why not? You got it going on. Why not? And God sometimes says, we must wait, wait, wait on the Lord. We must wait, wait, wait on the Lord. We must learn our lessons well. In his timing, he will tell us what to do, where to go, what to say. Now, I sang that song slowly. So you would get the feel of, okay, come on, come on, come on. Get back with the message. Okay, I, I hear you. I hear the wait, wait, wait. Now move on. That's the way we are about life. We're in a hurry. We want to get there in warp speed. We don't have time to waste listening, sitting, being still in the presence of God. Because we got places to go, things to see, people to do. <laughs> I know I'm messing it up on purpose. Listen, you guys, let life, let God be in the driver's side, in the driver's seat. Let him have his hand on the wheel. It may take you longer to get from point A to point B. It doesn't mean you won't get there. If it takes a month longer, a year longer, a decade longer, the bottom line is when you do get that thing in your hand, it will have been so well worth waiting for. But if you rush in where angels fear to tread, you might have nothing but regrets for being in a hurry. So know that God is in control. Know that there are times when things work against us. Uh, here's another example. Years ago, I was applying for a school bus driving job. And I had already driven a bus. I had a class too. I had all the things in line. I used to drive the city bus. I just want a little side action, a little extra money. And because you know how it is when you have jobs, they never pay you what you really would like to live on. So I'm thinking, well, this would be a good side hustle. And God made a point of a particular woman I knew from church walking in. And when they saw me applying, they said, oh, you can use me as a reference. Okay, great. What I did not know was that the company had blacklisted her for putting in a complaint. So when I used her as a reference, that totally wiped away my ability to get hired. 
Now I'm thinking, you dummy, you dummy, you dummy. And then the Lord was reminding, reminding me, do you notice the timing of that? You know, I allowed that to happen. Do you wonder why? Hmm. And what happened right after that, y'all? The Lord began to show me. He wanted me to be self-employed. And I asked the Lord. He led me to go to school and take up cosmetology. While I went to school, I did hair. As soon as I got my license, I was self-employed at a hair salon. I already had a partial list of clientele because I was already doing people at my house, including Jeanette, who's with us now online and our online service. So what I want to share with you is God knows the plans he has for you. And sometimes you think you have to take a particular route to get there. And God may say, if you take that route, you're going to fall into a sinkhole and will never get where I want you to get. But the route I'm taking you is going to take longer. It's going to have a few more stages you have to go through to get to the goal. But when you get to the goal, can't nobody take it from you. It's yours for the keeping. Now. Are you going to go God's route or are you going to be in a hurry and lean to your own understanding without acknowledging him in all your ways so he can direct your path? Which way are you going to go? Because hmm. if you judge by your own eyesight, there may be some stuff you don't know that's around the bend that Satan has sitting there as a crafty little trap waiting for you to sabotage your destiny. Now, God may have the slower route. You might have to sit in traffic for three hours, but eventually you will get there. And when you get there, guess what? You won't be late. You'll be right on time because God will set the stage where nothing can start until you arrive on the scene of your destiny. See, we get all caught up with everything that's working against us. How this doesn't feel good. How that doesn't feel good. How uh, 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 my body's acting weird. My my uncle's acting funny. My mama's acting strange. My my husband or my wife is acting bizarre. Okay, life happens. That does not mean it is not an indicator that God is angry with you. You hear me? No matter what the government does, no matter what the banking system does, no matter how soon the Antichrist rears his ugly head and the false prophet, no matter what, no matter how many demons you see in a week, it doesn't mean that that's going to sabotage and stop what God is doing. As long as you are trusting in God, you place your hand in the hand of the man who stills the water. You are consulting with God and acknowledging him in all your ways. You are reading the scriptures. You are getting wisdom and growing from the word of God. You are consulting with the people of God. You're not leaning to your flesh, to the whims of your flesh. You're not being blown around with every wind of doctrine that comes from your bad attitudes. You're not going by gospel gossip. You're strictly leaning on God. You're not going to make the next move until you know you have really, really heard from God beyond a shadow of a doubt. For me, here's an example. I would love to be able to live off of seven or eight hundred dollars extra a month. That I would be sitting pretty living like that. Okay? But guess what, y'all? The bottom line is no matter what, I still have my house. I'm still in a senior gated community. 
I'm not renting a room from a relative. I'm on my own because of God's blessing. I may not be where I want to be in the comfort zone I want to live at. But the bottom line is I am comfortable. I'm not hurting financially as far as not having a roof over my head. I'm not hurting financially to the point where I can only eat two meals a week. I'm not at that level. So I may not have it the way I want it. But I know that as I continue to pray, things will change over time. I can't be in a hurry. Yes, I would love to have a reverse mortgage, but I have to get counsel. I have to research that thing. I have to do my due diligence before I jump in head first because this house is a blessing from God and I do not want to jeopardize the house for a few extra bucks a month. So you have to decide, is God's way going to be my way no matter what I don't like about it? Because I'm going to tell you right now, yes, there will be things that God has in your life, things that God has not allowed to be part of your life yet, things that you have to do without or you have to wait on, or things you might have to lose while you're waiting. God is in control. And if you trust God, you know, because he is love. He can't help himself. He, he loves you. He can't help that. He is love. You, you know that all things work together for your good to them that love God and who are called according to his purpose. So he may allow a crisis to happen in your health. I'm going through a crisis myself. I'm waiting for the Lord because I do believe that once I investigate and I delve into all the help I can possibly get, that once all the help is in place and I'm situated and life has been made easier on me, the affliction is going to be gone, but the help will be there to stay. Do you see what I mean? No matter what I know, God is doing it for my good. He's not beating me up. He's not taking me to the woodshed. He's not turning his back on me and abandoning me. No. He's setting things up for my good, knowing I'm going to live alone for the rest of my life, knowing I don't have kids to take care of me in my old age, knowing that my even my big brothers, they're too sick to do anything or, you know, one's too sick, one's too broke. It doesn't matter. They can't do anything for me. So I have nobody to depend on but God and who God chooses to bless me through, period. Okay? So you have to learn, you have to understand that God wants good things for you more than you do. And no matter how many hard times go down, no matter how many things get taken from you by the powers that be, the people that rule the money, that run the money, that take the money, whatever, the bottom line is the earth, including them, is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So no matter what, y'all, God is in control. Do you trust him to, to navigate your life through his plan and on his map book, on his time clock, on his schedule? Or are you going to be the bull in the china closet and take the reins yourself and handle it? You just going to get things done. God takes too long. Yeah, I'm going to tell you, there are times we don't agree. We have little pea brains. We don't, he says his ways are above our ways. His thoughts above our thoughts. He is beyond our finding out. We still have to trust him because we have little pea brains, y'all. Our little pea brains are like a grain of sand compared to the universe when you compare what we know compared to what God knows. So don't you think he's due to trust? Even when things work against you, 
like me not getting the job for the bus driving because God had a bigger plan of me being self-employed where I could make more money doing what I love to do rather than making the boss money while I got a little pittance doing what I hated doing. Hmm? God knows, y'all. He knows you better than you will ever know yourself. Let him be in control. Trust his love. Trust his heart. There's a song that says, all things work for our good. Though sometimes we cannot see how they could. Struggles that break our hearts in two. Sometimes blind us to the truth. But our Father knows what's best for us. And his ways are not our own. So when you, when your pathway grows dim and you just can't see him, remember you are never alone. God is too wise to be mistaken. God is too good to be unkind. So when you don't understand and you can't see his plan, when you cannot trace his hand, trust his heart. He alone knows what is best for you. Mm, mm, mm. Anyway, I got to stop because I get emotional with that song. That song blesses my heart in a very personal level because God used it to help me get over a sorry relationship. My heart was broken. God gave me a dream and ministered that song to me. And um, I knew the song because I've sung it at church, but God turned it and ministered it to me. And it did a lot of healing for me, y'all. God let me know no matter what is going on, no matter how alone, <sighs> no matter how alone you may feel, no matter how forgotten it may look like you are, no matter how abandoned circumstances may tell you you have been, no matter how much pain you're enduring physically, psychologically, emotionally, spiritually, no matter what the pain, no matter what the cost, no matter what the loss, trust his heart. Trust God's heart for you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. God is. God is the joy and the strength of my life. No matter how it hurts. He removes all pain, misery, and strife. No matter how tormenting the demons are in the middle of the night. No matter how many arguments I get into or people come up and rise against me. He removes all pain, misery, and strife. He promised to keep me, never to leave me. He's never, never fallen short of his word. What do I have to do? Fast and pray. Stay in that narrow way. Keep my life clean every day. I want to be with him when he comes back. I've come too far. I'll never turn back. God is. Let him be for you what he is. The joy and the strength of your life. No matter how it hurts. No matter how dark the night. God is your joy. In the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. You may cry here and weep over there. As Psalm says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Why? Because God is present in your life. He is a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear though the earth be removed, though the mountains be cast into the sea. Listen, y'all. Psalms 46. Read it. 
God is. He's a very present help. He's right there with you through the storm, through the rain, through the wind, through the lightning, through the darkness, through the fears. God is right there with you, y'all. And nothing shall by any means harm you. <sighs> For those of you who feel like you have failed God, know that God, his love is too strong. His heart is bigger than your failures. When he knows you're not playing games with him, when he knows you're not playing tiddly weeks with your walk with the Lord, there are people who struggle hard. Why are they struggling so hard? Because they're psychologically damaged. They're emotionally damaged. You know, I used to always call myself an emotional cripple. And then God began a healing process in me. I wish everybody could experience that. But listen, you guys, remember, he is a healer. He's the lifter up of your head. And he is your strength. His strength is made perfect in your weakness. I'm not, I can go on and on and on trying to encourage you about not being discouraged by life by the powers that be when you feel like you don't have any power. <clears throat> Everybody else decides what you're going to make, what you're not going to make, how much you get to have, how much you, how, how little you get to keep. God is still in control. And it may be that there may be people he moved on that hasn't heard. They haven't gotten the memo. So the bottom line is just know your help is on the way. Your redemption draweth nigh. God is on his way, y'all. It's not going to be many days hence for the rapture to take place. And I tell you, <laughs> we all need to be ready for that if we want to go on that first flight going out. That might be the only flight. I don't know how many more he's going to have coming. I'm saying that to be funny. But just know that once the rapture takes place, we won't have to put up with this crap down here anymore. So let's pray that we are ready and let's be encouraged and encourage each other by reminding each other, this too shall pass, y'all. Amen? Uh. <laughs>